For the remaining GitHub Actions examples, we'll use a sample Next.js template web app our team put together. I'll walk briefly through how to build a GitHub repo for this template and establish a simple workflow that builds this application. The link to this web app is in the description box for this video. Now I have the Contoso Spaces Next web app template repository, so you can create your own repository for this template. I'm gonna go ahead and go to the use this template link and use that to create my own repository. So I'm going to create a repository called demo. I'm going to create a public repository and I'm going to use that for the remaining examples. And I'm going to clone this to my local machine. So I'm going to just go ahead and clone it. Have an empty folder. So just get clone and from there, I can npm install to install any dependencies I need. And while that's installing, I'm going to go over to the package JSON file and see that it has three main package JSON uh, npm scripts I'm mostly worried about. Um, there's the npm run build, which builds the application out. And npm run starts, which does like the production start of the application. And then the one I'll just test out real quick, npm run devs, which starts the dev server. Let's check on npm install. Looks like it installed all of our dependencies. So npm run dev should run a quick dev server for us. I'll go ahead and click on that. And it'll run our Contoso Spaces uh, application on a dev server. Just has a little home page with four locations. If I click explore our locations or the location links at the top, it'll take you to a list of locations. If you click learn more on any of them, it'll take you to details about that particular location. So really quick uh, sample application we use in a lot of our demos. We'll go back to Visual Studio Code. We are going to build a workflow. So we'll create a new file in our .github slash workflows folder. We will call this uh, integration.yaml. Again, the name is arbitrary, but that's the name we're going to go with today for this um, example. And we are going to do a simple build. So we're going to name this uh, build next JS web application. We're going to trigger this on any push to this repository. We're going to create a single job. The identifier of the job is build project, but the display name of the job is going to be build project and sentence structure. This job is going to run on Ubuntu latest. We're not going to run it in a container because we don't really need anything container specific, but we will run some basic steps. We will check out our code using actions checkout v3. We will install npm dependencies by running a universal script for npm install. And we will build our project assets by running npm run build. And that should be more than enough to build this project and validate that it builds on a build agent. So we'll do our first build commit, commit this, sync the changes to our remote repository and pending any typos, we should have a successful GitHub action. There we go. There's a build project job. It's requesting an agent with the label Ubuntu latest, which should have node installed on it. It's checking out our code. It's installing our NPM dependencies. And then it's going to run NPM run build, which should build our Next.js web application out. So we're just going to wait for it to successfully build our Next.js web application. There we go, it's compiling the data. It's built the static site content, which is our Next.js web application. Closed it pretty quickly, but you can see it built that content out. Unfortunately though, since it's built our web application data, that data exists on the build agent. So when the build agent is disposed of, that data is disposed of too. So the next couple of examples will be walking through how to get that data off of the build agent.